Hello, this is Shesha Chalam from Ashwagat Mysore. So, yesterday we had spoken about the Sun, Mars and Mercury combination and their results in the previous video. So, we are actually discussing about three planetary combinations and today it is one of the most strongest of the combinations with the set of planets called as the planets with the masculine character sun mars jupiter all three are friends and what a great combination if if this if is a very important if if sun is not debilitated and it is strong if mars and jupiter are well placed and they are not combust what a what a great combination of a commanding person a person who has the capacity to rule, the capacity to judge, the capacity to be ethical and also to be a king or a king-like kind of a person who will be actually a philanthropist, a teacher, a politician, a judge. Name all those great portfolios in which people are there and they are actually trying to change or protect or uh, you know, keep the community or keep their community or the country or the globally, they are always called as leaders, good leaders. So, this is a great combination. So, let us go into this combination in detail. We all know that Jupiter is the teacher, Bruhaspati. The teacher is the sense that he is a as you know, our teacher was every day he would tell about Jupiter, we would tell that please sir, tell something negative about Jupiter. Why are you so good about Jupiter? He would tell that is the planet which gives wisdom. He would always keep using that word, you know, benevolent, a great benevolent teacher. So we did not understand. I, I thought that it was a very great positive, uh, you know, uh, phrase benevolent teacher. But later on, after a lot of research, I understood that is a teacher, that is Jupiter, who teaches us how to endure situations, what we have fallen into, by giving us a lot of patience. So, he tells that, you know, good days will come, man. You please wait. So, it is like as good as keeping eyes over your, uh, you know, uh, somewhere you have got hit, you put the eyes, you right? You keep that cool, beautiful eyes over it so that uh, you will uh, suddenly forget the pain. That is what Jupiter does. So, the negative aspect of Jupiter was so beautifully covered up by our teacher, telling that he is a teacher, he is a teacher. What does he actually teach? He gives you the wisdom of endurance, the wisdom of tolerance. So, people who have the wisdom of endurance, the people who have the wisdom of tolerance are those people who can rise up in this world because they will not unnecessarily fight with all those small problems. They will not unnecessarily get into tussles with all these small things and small people, they never think small. So, when, when you know, this is the problem of our society, that people don't want to think small, but they act small. They think big, they have big dreams that I want to achieve this, I want to achieve that. Do you have the perseverance, patience and commitment? I call it PPC, which is the most important thing which Jupiter gives a person. It's a great planet. But anyway, you should understand that it will carve out a personality from a person. It's not an easy thing, you know, to surrender your identity to a particular situation and then change yourself positively to the situation. But you have lost a part of yourself there. 
or you have shunned your part of yourself, you have tied it up, you have put bundled it and thrown it somewhere in the corner telling that, let us see. Because the aggressive part of Mars, the aggressive part of Sun is to conquer, achieve and go ahead, take things and grow very high. You cannot keep doing it, right? So, it's like uh, Alexander who wanted to rule the whole world. That is Mars. Extreme Mars. So, he wanted to go and rule the whole world and he said, there was very less wisdom there. The wisdom is that you build an empire slowly. You cannot do it in a, you know, in the same uh, Lifetime, you need to do it in generations, like Egyptian civilization. How many dynasties? Ramses I started the 19th dynasty. It's not the first dynasty that Ramses I was there, 19th dynasty. And then, so people, when they talk about Egypt, they always see the slavery, what was happening, and all those things. But there is a huge empire which was built, very big empire. The Egyptian empire was untouchable. Nobody could even imagine the expanse and the strength of the empire when it was in its golden era. Its Ramses II took it to a height. Ramses II, the, you know, the very important and a very famous movie of uh, the Prince of Egypt where uh, Moses and Ramses have a lot of uh, great role to play in that movie. So, I love that those uh, mythological uh, depictions. It's not mythology, but the depiction is more mythological. So, but thing is, if a person has to establish a kingdom, if a person has to establish an empire, he needs to first understand that he cannot do it himself alone. That is the first, you know, uh, point in which he will compromise. If everything is done by one person, then it is not called an empire. So, he has dependencies. He depends upon other people, other factors. They may not have this yoga that he, you know, that they will all achieve everything perfectly. No. So, anybody who has to come to heights in their life, they will slowly start compromising on the quality and the uh, zeal because they keep adding up other people into the organization. He will then train them to be, you know, do his work. You are going in for a job in a particular company. You are not doing your job there. You are working on that project which has been allotted because the company has a vision. They have taken a project and that project has to be completed. So, they will train you to do what they want to achieve. So, that is the strength of this combination of Sun, Mars and Jupiter. If a person has a, such a strong combination, he can become an apt leader. He can become a very unbiased, strong judge. He will unnecessarily never fall prey to any kind of political or geographical or communal pressure. Such a strong combination. This is one of the strongest combinations of this first set. First set is Sun, Mars and Jupiter. The second set is Saturn, Mercury and Venus. These sets have to be understood. Moon does not belong to any set. It can join Sun, great. It can join Mars, great. That is why Moon does not have any enemies. He does not treat any planet as enemies. The two sets which are important, Sun, Mars and Jupiter for the masculine set, the feminine set or what we call as the more creative set that is the Saturn, Mercury and Venus and in between there is uh, Moon and we have Rahu and Ketu supportively uh, playing their roles 
both in these sets when they get involved. So, Jupiter, if debilitated, this person will lose wisdom. He will become what we call in Sanskrit as Dishaheen. What is Dishaheen? There is velocity. There is momentum. There is a lot of force. But there is no direction. Dishaheen, becoming directionless. So, if a person has to have good direction, good humility, then Jupiter has to be strong in this combination. If Jupiter becomes weak, combust, debilitated in this combination, with let us say debilitation in the sense that Jupiter is in you know, Capricorn along with Sun and Mars, Mars is exalted, lot of power. Jupiter, although it goes through what we call as the Nicha Bhanga Raja Yoga, but still, if it is combust with sun, I will not take that Nicha Bhanga to be complete. I will tell that it has become void. So that means Nichatva, that is the debilitation, will stay debilitated. The planet which is debilitated will stay debilitated, but in the reversal of debilitation, what we call as the Nicha Bhanga, will not happen if Jupiter is combust along with Mars exalted in the sign of Capricorn. I am taking, giving you some classical examples, but still giving classical examples for all the Rashis is extremely difficult. But just like this, if you understand, then this personality with so much of power, so much of, uh, um, you know, anxiety to achieve something. And if this combination is for a Gemini ascendant, provided that both Mars and Jupiter become malefics in such a way and being sitting in the 8th house, oh my God, this will make this an erratic combination of desire to achieve whatever comes in between. So they will never, you know, uh, they, will, they, they, are, they, they go berserk. So depending on the Lagnadipati, see any combination in a chart should be analyzed depending on the strength of the ascendant and the strength of the chart. There are many combinations like very great combinations in many charts. The person itself might not be capable of handling the combination. The person might have suddenly gone through a huge trauma. He will be in depression. Let us say there is a, a debilitated uh, Lagnadipati, that is the Ascendant Lord along with Moon Ketu or a Moon Saturn in the Ascendant and then you have this great combination. You cannot make, you know, this combination will not be able to give you the worth because you are not worthy. You make yourself worthy, then the combinations in the chart, the Buddhaditya Yoga, the Gajikesri Yoga, the uh, Chandra Mangala Yoga, the Surya the Yogas, the Amala Yogas, all these Yogas will only give you fruits if you have the capability of taking those fruits, the capability of you know achieving something through those Yogas. So Yogas does not mean that if it is there, it's going to happen. No. If it is there, it's going to happen is not a mandatory thing. There is a clear cut condition that the native will have to have certain qualities in the chart which will make the yoga bloom in a particular period of time. It will not be like the yoga is there and it keeps happening every day. No, it keeps, it blooms in a particular season, in a particular time. That is why we see the transits and the dasha bhaktis. So, thank you very much for today's class.